Krishna speaks about the initiation process. Chapter 4, text number 34. Tadvidi pranipatena Hari prashne na sevaya Upatekshyanti te jnanam Jnaninas tadvadashana Tadvidi pranipatena Hari prashne na sevaya Upatekshyanti te jnanam Jnaninas tadvadashana Tadvidi pranipatena Hari prashne na sevaya Upatekshyanti te jnanam Jnaninas tadvadarshana Translation just, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The path of spiritual realization is undoubtedly difficult. The Lord, therefore, advises us to approach a bona fide spiritual master in the line of disciplic succession from the Lord himself. No one can be a bona fide spiritual master without following the principle of disciplic succession. The Lord is the original spiritual master, and a person in the disciplic succession can convey the message of the Lord as it is to his disciple. No one can be spiritually realized by manufacturing his own process, as is the fashion of the foolish pretenders. The Bhagavatam says, Dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam. The path of religion is directly enunciated by the Lord. Therefore, mental speculation or dry arguments cannot help one to the right path. Not by independent study of books of knowledge can one progress in spiritual life. One has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge. Such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender and one should serve the spiritual master like a menial servant without false prestige. Satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. Inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission and service, 
inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective. One must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master. And when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. In this verse, both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned. Not only should one hear submissively from the spiritual master, but one must also get a clear understanding from him in submission and service and inquiries. A bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind toward the disciple. Therefore, when the student is submissive and is always ready to render service, the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakata Mayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yadapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sāvaitam sāvadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam Shri Radha krishna padam sahagana lalita shri vishaka nitamscha He krishna karana sindhu dina pandu jagatpate gopesha kopika kanta describing different kinds of sacrifices which one may, one may make. And the conclusion of sacrifices was that greater than the sacrifice of possessions was the sacrifice of transcendental knowledge. And then how to go about acquiring transcendental knowledge. So this is described in this verse. That the sacrifice of transcendental knowledge is achieved by approaching a spiritual teacher. And the process of approaching the spiritual teacher is then described. Tadvidi pranipatena. Pranipatena means that one has to fall down without any reservation. Uh, Prabhupada therefore in the purport talks about the humility which is required in approaching the spiritual teacher. Actually, it's the ultimate humility to submit oneself to a spiritual teacher to accept the process of initiation. We generally see the guru sits on the higher seat and the disciple sits on the lower seat, you see. So, one takes a subordinate position, one offers respects. Prabhupada talks about how 
one must respect the spiritual teacher as being the representative of the disciplic succession. And so one has to honor the spiritual teacher in that way. Although the spiritual teacher may consider, should consider himself a very ordinary and uh, unworthy person, but still it is the duty of the disciple to show that kind of respect towards the spiritual teacher. So, first of all, submitting oneself, uh, tarvidi pranipatena, and then pariprasnena. Pariprasnena means making in inquiries. And these inquiries should be in relation to the spiritual subject matter. You know, we don't come to the spiritual teacher and ask him for a lucky number <laughs> or how to make my business successful or, you know, so many mundane things we may think to inquire. But we should inquire about the spiritual subject matter to understand the absolute truth. That is the purpose of approaching the spiritual teacher, as it is worded here in this verse. Just try to learn the truth by approaching. The, so we should inquire about the truth. We want to understand what is actually the truth. Why are we here? And who is the, who is God? Who is the controller behind this cosmic manifestation? We want to understand everything in the proper manner. So inquiry is part of the process of approaching the spiritual teacher. And then when, one in, when, when one's inquiries are satisfied, then it is followed by seva, by reciprocation of service. We accept initiation from the spiritual master just like I was initiated by Srila Prabhupada in London, Srila Prabhupada came there and we had a temple and we had Radha Krishna deities, big size. We were the only temple in the world with large size deities at the time and we were not able to worship them very well. We were very primitive. But we were doing our best. We were all young people and uh, I was one of the oldest. I was 22. You know. <laughs> uh, so we were all pretty young and uh, we were serving Radha Landanishwara and having a nice time chanting and dancing every day. And Srila Prabhupada came and at that time in our temple I think there were two ladies and there were about 20 men, you know. Usually we, some parts of the world we get more ladies, some parts of the world you get more men. You know, like in India we find more men, but in China we get a lot of ladies. <laughs> yeah. And many other places it's like that also. Prabhupada talks how many, all the, nearly all the religions of the world are like that, that they attract more ladies, more women than men. So we had a, only a couple of ladies and we were 20 men and Prabhupada came and you know we were told we were all going to get initiation. So Prabhupada gave us all initiation, it was quite Amazing. I was initiated at that same time, Mahavishnu and Subhag were also initiated. Subhag had been waiting. He joined long be he joined a year before me, but Prabhupada hadn't come. And so they were telling him, You can get initiated, write a letter and Prabhupada will give you initiation. He said, No, I want to wait till Prabhupada comes. So finally Prabhupada came. So at that time Subhag got this initiation. Subhag means auspicious, right? And Prabhupada explained, he said, he said, you see, his parents sent him to London so he would not become a devotee. 
because he was living in Calcutta and he was often going to temples. So his parents were worried that he might become a sadhu. So they thought, we'll send him to London for education. So he went to London and he met devotees. Krishna arranged, you see, everything. So very nice. He's a wonderful devotee. I'm so fortunate to have such wonderful God brothers. So uh, initiation, very important. We often think of it as like taking birth, right? We take birth from the mother and father, but the second birth is when you take the initiation from the spiritual teacher. It is said everyone has got a mother and father. But only the fortunate person has got a spiritual teacher. And by the grace of this spiritual teacher, then we get Krishna. In the Bengali saying, Prabhupada quotes, Janami Janami Sabi Pita Matapai Krishna Guru Nahimili Vajahari Ai. Right? So we're very fortunate when we receive initiation. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is described Brahmanda Brahmite Kunya Bhagyavan Jeev Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Beach. We are traveling as living entities, we are traveling in many different places, different universes even, throughout the material creation. And when we become fortunate, then we contact the spiritual teachers and by the grace of the spiritual teacher we get the seed of devotion, this Bhakti Lata Beach. So that seed of devotion is planted in the heart. Srila Prabhupada describes how he met his spiritual master first in 1922. At that time he had recently been married and he had a young family and he was doing some business. But when he met Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada for the first time, immediately his Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada requested him that you are a very nice young man. Why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu everywhere? And of course, Prabhupada said, I was shocked. I thought, well, well, how can I do it? I'm just, you know, I'm a married man. I have my wife. I have my family. And he also argued, Prabhupada told us how he argued with Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, that he said, our country needs to get independence first. We have to get freedom from the British rule. Then only we can spread Lord Chaitanya's movement. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati argued back. He said, no, Krishna consciousness cannot wait for some political adjustment. You know, just like there's a fire in the building. Prabhupada gives the example in the Bhagavatam. There may be a fire in the building. So the people in the next house may speak a different language. You don't speak to them usually. They speak a different language. So you don't wait till you learn the language before you tell them about the fire. All right? If there's a fire in the building, it's an emergency. You have to do something quick. So even though you don't know the language, somehow you communicate the message. So like that, Prabhupada encouraged us that although we were very unqualified for Krishna Consciousness, Prabhupada gave us this chance to take up this work on behalf of the disciplic succession. That Lord Chaitanya desired that the holy name would be preached everywhere. Priti viti achiyat nogaradi gram sarvatra prachorhoibe morana. Sounds like the Bengali class, eh? <laughs> All these Bengali slokas. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, Lord Chaitanya wanted this preaching to go on everywhere, all over the, the everywhere, without any limit. 
and Prabhupada was acting on behalf of Lord Chaitanya and he was recruiting all of us in his emergency, in the emergency situation, just like when there's a war. They take everyone, go, come and fight, you see. So Prabhupada was declaring war on the, the material energy and he engaged souls like myself and others to take up this Krishna conscious work and distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere. Go everywhere and without considering who is qualified and who is not. Just give Krishna consciousness to everyone. So this is the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we want to continue on in this way. You know, there's still so many places to go, so much to be done in the service of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. And for that purpose, we recruit people to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And the recruiting is done, particularly we connect people into this Krishna Consciousness Movement through the process of initiation. Now someone may argue that, well, initiation is not required just to chant Hare Krishna. And you can even support this with a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where, it's dis where it describes so that if you just want to chant Hare Krishna, there's no initiation required, right? But if you read Prabhupada's purport on that verse, I think it's about six pages of purport, and Prabhupada quotes all the different acharyas who comment on this verse, and they all explain the necessity of initiation. Hmm? And they explain that why initiation is important, because we're not just going to chant Hare Krishna. We cannot imitate Haridas Thakur. Haridas Thakur could sit all day and chant Hare Krishna. He didn't need initiation. But we don't just sit and chant Hare Krishna all day. We have Lord Jagannath here. There's a lot of work to be, a lot of service there in serving the deities. And this is also an important principle in devotional service, which we were discussing in the previous two days. We were talking about the different angas of sadhana bhakti, and how part of it was serving the deity, and, uh, studying scriptures, all of these different things that are required. So we're not just going to chant Hare Krishna. We do have to study the scriptures, we have to worship the deity, and we have to learn how to regulate our different activities in Krishna consciousness. It's not just only sit and chant Hare Krishna. But that's the beginning, right? In the beginning, Prabhupada says, you could say, initiation is when we first get someone to chant Hare Krishna. We give someone the beats and show them how to chant. This is initiation. Uh, there were some devotees were doing some preaching programs and they wanted to give out beats to everyone and let everyone chant on the beats. And Prabhupada said, well, said, this is not a very good idea. He said, if you give the beats to everyone, they'll think you're their guru. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. Oh, it was the devotees were going down the Ganga on the boat in Bengal. And it was a devotee called Vishnu Jana Swami. And he, Prabhupada had sent him to India to go and do this. And he'd taken a boat down the Ganges and they were stopping at the villages. So Vishnu Jana Swami had the idea, we'll get beats and we'll give everybody beats and get them to chant. But Prabhupada said, no, no, don't, don't do that. They'll think you're their guru if you do that. <laughs> so uh, Prabhupada didn't want devotees to become the spiritual teachers too quickly. Uh, Anyway, initiation is part of the process of devotional service. It is something which is required because it officially connects us into the Krishna consciousness movement. Without the initiation, we may be chanting, 
we may be following the four principles, but we haven't made any commitment to devotion of service. So the commitment is important. It's an important thing that we've made this commitment. But we, just like today, we're making, we're giving initiation. So the candidates will be required to make a vow. We will ask, what are the four principles? And they will describe the principles in the presence of the deities, and then in the presence of all the devotees and Srila Prabhupada's here, of course. And then we will do the fire yagya also, so the fire is also witness. And so in this way we make a commitment to these things, right? We make a commitment to chant Hare Krishna and to observe the principles of religion. So this is important, it's an important part in devotional service. Of course, there are two initiations. We have the first initiation, which is the most important, the initiation into the chanting of the Maha Mantra. The second initiation is where we give the mantra, the Gayatri Mantra. But it's the first initiation which Prabhupada considered most important because it's the chanting of the Holy Name which will take us back to Godhead to the shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. So in chanting the holy name, there are ten offenses to be avoided. And Srila Prabhupada, when he would give initiation, he would often speak on these ten offenses. So it's important for us, we can just briefly touch on them. First of all, to blaspheme devot devotees who have dedicated their life to propagating the holy name. So in this age, this is Kali Yuga, and one of the symptoms of Kali Yuga is quarrel, an argument. And it becomes a habit for us sometimes to find fault with others. So this is not good for our Krishna consciousness. And this is offensive, and it affects our chanting. We were showing yesterday the anartas, the things which influence our chanting in the Holy Name, which weaken the power of our chanting. And the, one of the causes of anartas were offenses or apparats. And then these apparats were mentioned that there is nam apparat. We're talking about these just now, the ten offenses. There's also seva, seva apparat in worshipping the deity. And there's also Vaishnava apparat. And there was also, it mentioned also, offenses towards other living entities. People may not devote, be devotees, but we should still deal with them nicely. We should be kind, compassionate on everyone. We don't want to commit any offenses against anyone. So how can we avoid offenses? By seeing the good, by appreciating the good qualities of others, we say, see our own faults and see the good in others. That is recommended. The second offense is to consider names like the names of Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva to be equal to or independent of the name of Lord Vishnu. So we chant the names of Krishna here. We don't chant the names of other different devas. At the same time, we do not disrespect the devas. We also offer our respect to them, but we understand they're not the Supreme Lord and we give the importance to chanting the name, the names of the Supreme Lord. And we have many names to chant. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has given us wonderful songs, all right? Yashomati Nandan and Vibhavari Shesha, these kind of songs full of the names of Krishna. So it's very, Krishna has so many names. And these names are all very powerful. They cleanse the heart. Then the third offense, to disobey the order of the spiritual teachers. So these instructions, just like Srila Prabhupada is the founder Acharya, so the purpose of initiation is to connect the devotee to Srila Prabhupada and to the disciplic succession. So the spiritual teachers will pass on Srila Prabhupada's instructions. Just like Srila Prabhupada instructed us, 
to work together, to cooperate together, and to keep the society together, and to distribute his books, and so many different things. So Prabhupada's teachings are also in the books here. We study the books and we also communicate to the disciples and to the devotees how we can better follow the instructions of Srila Prabhupada, which are also the instructions of the disciplic succession. Right? There's no real contradiction. Sometimes somebody may say do something, may not be able to do it immediately. Just like Srila Prabhupada met his spiritual master in 1922, he took initiation in 1933, so it was 11 years later. And he didn't go immediately to the West. It was 1966 before he went to the West. So it's not that immediately one can go on and follow all the orders. But in course of time, we try to come. We try to fulfill the desire of the spiritual teacher. The fourth offense is to blaspheme Vedic literature or literature in pursuance of the Vedic version. And this means regularly reading Prabhupada's books, important for us to try to go through Prabhupada's books regularly, hearing, reading. We have many books to read, right? Not just one book. <laughs> we have many books. Bhagavad Gita is only one of the books. There's many others. We want to try to read them, go through them, study them with the devotees. Fifth offense, to consider the glories of chanting Hare Krishna to be imagination. We may hear, once chanting of the holy name can destroy unlimited amounts of sin. And we may think, oh, I don't think it's possible. Just saying Hare Krishna could do so much, destroy all my sins. We may not have full faith in that, but it is true. And if we doubt that, then this is an offense. Then six offenses to give an interpretation of the holy name. We give the example, Krishna means black. So black means something mysterious. So darkness, something which cannot be known. So Krishna must mean something which cannot be known. So this way people interpret the holy name of Krishna. This is an offense. The seventh offense is a serious one. To commit sinful activities on the strength of chanting. We may think, oh, I'm going to have some sense gratification, going to party or something tonight, I'm going to do some eat some things which are not good, or maybe even drink something, I'll chant more tomorrow to make up. <laughs> so that kind of chanting is not appreciated by Krishna, and that is also considered offensive. It's like the bathing of the elephant. The elephant takes bath, gets clean, then rolls in the dirt. Okay, so eighth offense, then to consider chanting Hare Krishna, like one of the karmakandi activities offered in the Vedas. So we may think chanting Hare Krishna is for giving me some good karma, that I will enjoy more the material world. So this is not pure chanting also. The ninth offense, to instruct the faithless persons about the glories of the holy name. Now this means, does this mean, we should understand properly what this means. We can tell anyone to chant Hare Krishna, but we don't reveal to them immediately the glories of the holy name. We want, first of all, to help them develop some faith in the process of Krishna consciousness. The offense is to instruct faithless persons. So we have to create faith in people so that they can understand the importance of the chanting of the Holy Name. Then we can give them proper instruction. And we create faith by kirtan, by al allowing them to take part in the kirtan. We go everywhere in public and we ask everyone join in the chanting of the Holy Name. And we invite everyone try this chanting, you can see how it benefits you. That's not an offense. But 
we want to cultivate their faith, they want to develop more faith, and that faith comes by giving them some basic knowledge, explaining to people, you're not the body, you're the soul, this chanting will help you control the mind, and you can understand more about your spiritual nature. So gradually people develop some faith in the process, and then they become more qualified. And then the tenth offense is not to have complete faith in the chanting and to maintain material attachment, even after receiving many instructions. So initiation is like uh, declaring war on the material energy, right? We're giving up the desire to enjoy material, the material world. So, it's a big step. If we want, to, if we if we have that mood to commit ourselves fully to the chanting, then the chanting will have great potency, very powerful. But it's also mentioned one should be careful not to be inattentive while chanting. From inattention, as we heard yesterday, it's the seed of all other offenses. So, chanting with care and attention. Prabhupada would explain, we use the tongue to chant and the ears to hear. Inattentive chanting means within the mind we're thinking so many other things. We're not hearing the holy name. When we're chanting attentively, then we hear the holy name. And when we're not attentive, then the mind is away some other place. The mind has gone to where? Where Singapore people go, I don't know. Where you go? Okay, so these are the ten offenses. And uh, we ask the devotees who are taking initiation, and those of you who are initiated also, try to do this chanting very carefully. Okay, so now I will give the, the beats to the two devotees who are taking initiation and we will hear their vows and then uh, we will do the yagya because we have to have RT by 7 o'clock and we want to do some chanting. So, Daru, Daru, you go to Prabhupada and offer obeisances to Prabhupada. Shashi Kumar, you also go, go to Prabhupada, offer obeisances. So these two young men are taking initiation today. They're young men, quite young, right? One man complained to Prabhupada when Prabhupada was giving sannyas to some people. He, the man complained, they're very young. But Prabhupada said, if we wait till they're old, they won't be able to do anything. <laughs> right? Old men cannot do very much. Oh, I'm old now. You know. <laughs> but these are young men. So, this is a great blessing for Singapore that young people are coming forward and taking initiation in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is not just for old people, right? <laughs> it's for young people. Prabhupada. They asked Prabhupada, why so many young people were joining the Krishna Consciousness Movement? Prabhupada said, when you're young, youth is the time for education. So these two young men have come forward and they're taking initiation today. They've already been in Krishna Consciousness for a number of years, right? Shashi Kumar Prabhu is here. He is, his mother and father are both initiated devotees. And he's been associating with the devotees, not only here in Singapore for many years, but then he went to Perth to study there. And he's, at this time he's still living in Perth, but he's regularly participating and associating with the devotees in Perth, Australia. So he's come here today for initiation. I don't go to Australia. So he came here to get initiation. So. We will ask him, what are the four principles? You can take this microphone. Um, no meat eating, includes fish and eggs. 
no intoxication, no gambling, and no illicit sex. Every day, chanting? 16 rounds minimum. Okay. So, so this uh, Shashi Kumar Prabhu, he is a very active participant in Sankirtan, plays very nice Madanga, he's very active in Kirtan every So I'm giving him a name of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the name is uh, Sachi Dula. Sachi Dula Das Prabhu Ki. Sachi Dula means one who is very dear to Lord Ch to Mother Sachi. So Lord Chaitanya, of course, the son is very dear to the mother. Uh, the other candidate is Daryl Prabhu. Daryl Prabhu also has been coming regularly and associating with devotees for many years. His mother and father also come. Are they here today? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Very good. Mother and father are here. They're very favorable. And of course his aunt is Karuna Amrita. So a lot of connection with devotees for a very long time. And recently he's been also traveling with me. He went, came with me to Taiwan and Hong Kong. And recently we were just in Malaysia for a little while. So, Daryl Prabhu, you tell us what are the four principles? And no, no meat eating, fish and eggs, um, no intoxication, no gambling, and no illicit sex. And everyday chanting? Minimum 16 rounds. Okay. So, your name is Danavir Das. Danavir means one who is courageous and charitable, right? He's giving his life for Krishna. That's the highest charity, <laughs> right? Danavir is also, I have a very nice god brother, Danavir Goswami, he preaches in America, Prabhupada disciple. So your name is Danavir Das, right? So we hope you will also be charitable, give Krishna consciousness everywhere and be brave. Right? Hare Krishna. Danavir Prabhu Ki. Okay, thank you very much. So, some other devotees are also sitting in the Yagya today. There's one lady from China. She was initiated in China by me, Divya Shakti Mataji. She's from China. She's living here in Singapore. Her son is a student in NUS. So she never had the opportunity to sit, take part in the yagya yet, so she's sitting in the yagya today. Right? Who else is in the yagya? Oh, Ruparagunath and, and, and Guranga. So Ruparagunath and Guranga oh, Mataji are also sitting in the yagya because they receive second initiation. What about Rukmini? Rukmini Dwarkadish also. Yeah, last time we gave initiation to Rukmini Dwarkadish. So they will sit in the yagya, three other people today. So now we'll begin the yagya. Hare Krishna. Well, we're going to chant Brahma Samhita. Oh. We create some nice auspicious atmosphere. We'll 
हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 Now, with the bananas within your palm. Stand up, please. Now, within your mind, you will pay obeisance to your Guru Maharaj, and then to Shri Prabhupada, Guru Parampara, and Shri Panchatat Bhagwan, and Jagannath Baladesh Patra, Pralak Nishmi Dev, Tulsi Maharani. and pray that you will be able to serve your spiritual master and help him in his preaching activities in helping shila prabhu pa right okay and the rest of the vaishnavas kindly please bless these initiates so that they can go on with their spiritual lives very nicely and help preach krishna consciousness namo brahmanya brahmanya devaya devaya bananas by the side then we will start kirtan and you go around the fire pay your bends to your spiritual master prabhupad and the deity right kirtan please this place the bananas by the side yeah and don't throw inside okay hari krishna hari krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna